Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's not going to be a planning video per se, like a plan with me, which is what I typically do on this channel, um, which I've actually really enjoyed. Instead, this video is going to be something that I have kind of, I've seen discussions throughout Instagram and Facebook and different things like that about planning challenges and kind of where people are in their planning process since the beginning of the year. And so I want to, in this video, talk about how I plan using my Hobonichi Cousin and my Hobonichi Weeks and kind of my tips for what I have found for my successful planning. So if that would be something that you'd be interested in, then go ahead and keep watching. So the first thing that I think we need to really identify and understand and think about is know what you want to use your planners for. This year in 2023, I am using my Hobonichi Cousin and I also have my Hobonichi Weeks. So those are my two planners that I'm using this year and have been actually pretty successful, I think, in kind of getting my, my planning process done. So knowing what you want to use your planners for, I think is the number one thing that people need to think about and identify. So for me, the Hobonichi Cousin, this I use for my weekly planning, uh, my journaling and memory keeping and things like that. So the goal of this planner is for me to see what I do throughout the week. So that is what I like. So this is the current week and I like to see my, you know, my work hours. I like to see kind of what happens, like my appointments, what I do during the day. Um, I have like a me time down here to kind of document what I'm doing after my kids have gone to sleep, what I eat. So this is I use this, my weekly spreads, to see what I do during the week. That is my goal. That is what I want out of this planner. In addition, my other goal of this planner is in the journal pages, I want to document things that have happened for memory keeping purposes. So I have pictures of my daughter getting her ears pierced for the second time, going out to like having a lunch date with my two girls. So. I want to use this as a memory keeping planner. So that is 100% what my Hobonichi cousin is for. That is my goal. That is what I use this for. Whereas my weeks, this has um, a couple of my trackers in here, but this primarily is used as my everyday carry. So this is small enough that I can throw in my purse, but this is basically the same information that's in my weekly spreads in my cousin, but in a paper format that I can easily take notes in. I can throw it in my purse on the go. So I don't really have many stickers. This week I did have stickers because I had leftovers from my cousin, but for the most part, this doesn't have that many stickers. It's purely a functional planning planner. I, I don't use this for aesthetic reasons. I don't really do much with it. This is just enough that I have it. I use this for my listing of all of the actions that I need, but this is just my everyday carry, throw it in my purse, and that's it. So that's what this is for. So these are my two planners that I use every day. That is what I have. So I think the second thing that has kind of helped me out having a successful planning journey so far in 2023 is to do what works for you. It's okay to kind of change what you do throughout the year. You are not set in, I bought these two planners and I'm stuck with them. This is what I have. This is what I, I thought about doing. This is kind of what I intended me to do during 23 and that's it. Like that, that should not be what you your mindset should be. It's okay to change. For example, I also bought this Hobonichi Weeks, the mega version. This was going to be my work planner. So I was going to use this to, you know, go through my work 
to, to document my appointments, my notes. I was going to use the extra note pages in the back for additional things that pop up. And this is what I'm going to be like my daily work planner and work note journal. And I think I made this into maybe the, I think I might've made it through January. And I realized very quickly, this did not work. This was not something I, I took either too many notes. I didn't take enough notes. So I felt like I wasn't getting the benefit of what this is supposed to be for. And it just didn't fit with my work lifestyle. So I had to put this to a side. I went back just to regular spiral notebook and just went ahead and wrote in my appointments, my meetings and all that in there like I had done in the previous years um, because I thought I would do something differently this year and it just, it didn't work. I'm okay putting this to the side and realizing that just didn't work and I'm okay with that. In addition, I also went from, you know, kind of knowing what, back to the knowing what works for you, I used to do um, bullet journaling. So that was what I had done in the past. This is 2021 and 22, uh, but I also have 2019 and 2020. Uh, but I had been using bullet journals in the past. And I was, it's just a blank burnt bullet journal that I would, you know, do whatever spreads that I had. And that was what I used in 2022. I decided I didn't like the blank page and, and trying to create something um, every single week. And instead I went to this like Amanda Rach Lee undated bullet journal. And that's what I used in 2022. And so, you know, you just have to do what works for you, whether that's a dated planner, an undated planner, bullet journals, whatever the case may be, do what works for you. And it's okay to change in the middle of the year. It's, it's okay to change within two weeks of using your planner and realizing it just doesn't work. And that kind of ties into you got to do what makes you happy when you're looking at your planner. So what I have found out through my Hobonichi cousin and looking at other people's spreads and just my how I use this planner, I have realized that my weekly spreads that I have I don't like a lot of stickers. This doesn't work for me. This is very busy to me and I can't see what I do during the day. I'm much more of a minimalistic type person. And so I know that's what makes me happy and that's what I'm going to do going forward. In addition, you have to figure out what kind of pens you like. Like do what makes you happy. If you like pencils in your planner, then do it. If you like gel pens or fountain pens or ballpoint pens, you know, you just got to figure out what you enjoy and what you want to do. I think the problem that I have found and that I've kind of seen in some of the comments on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and things like that, all the social media platforms, is that people feel like they need to mimic what they see other people do. I love looking at other people's spreads and I can see the beauty in what they're doing, but I realize that I, I can't do what they do. I am not them. I have to do what makes me happy. So while their planner looks so aesthetic and so beautiful and just the layout is amazing, it just, you have to do what works for you and try not to mimic them. Like it's good to use them as a guide to go and, and figure out what you should be doing, but don't feel like you have to do exactly what they do with the exact same sticker layouts and, and all of that, because I think doing that makes you not want to use this. So the week that I used all of these, the Coffee Monster Co. sticker kit, I loved using the stickers. But because this was not what I enjoyed seeing, I realized I wasn't wanting to look at this and I, it kind of sat to the side. So if you feel, if you try to mimic somebody, it might eventually have the opposite effect in what you're trying to do and you might not want to see it or you might kind of, you know, put it to the side and say, I don't want to deal with this right now because I don't like the look of it. And then you don't use it. Do what makes you happy, identify what works for you and stick with it or don't stick with it. I mean, you could always fluctuate and you know, one week I have stickers and one week I don't have as many stickers. So this is your planner. You do what makes you happy. The third 
thing that has worked really well for me in my planning journey is I have identified the best place that I have my two planners in close to my body. So I know I have the best place that I want to keep these planners to where I will use them. So I know this could be a challenge for some people. I work from home like 99.9% .9 of the time. And so I have my planner, both of them, my weeks and my, my cousin, I have open either to my weekly page or my daily page. It is always on my desk. This is what this, it kind of looks like on a daily basis. And this is always on my desk, always open, just kind of to the side when I'm working. And I, I have realized that having it out makes me remind myself to write in my daily pages if something happens during the day that I want to document for memory purposes. Like it's out and it's like, oh yeah, let me go ahead and do that really quickly. Let me take, you know, two minutes and just write down something really fast. Having this open is what has definitely helped me keep up with updating this. I know if you work in an office or in a place that you you don't have that capability, it could be a challenge, but you know, you have to try to figure out what you can do that will benefit your life and whether you even need to keep this on a daily basis or keep it open every day. Um, if you're like a waitress, obviously you won't be able to just run to the counter and, and make a note really quickly. Um, but maybe you have this in your car or your purse or something that you can jot down thoughts or update if necessary on breaks or at lunch or whatever the case may be. But just do find the best place that you can put your planners if you need to do a daily update. If you just do a weekly update, like you don't have daily pages, you just have a weekly update, then maybe you don't need to have it out every day. But just find a place that you can place your planner to where it's not out of sight, out of mind, and you might not forget about it. The last kind of big tip that I have is understand that your lifestyle or what's going on in your life may change or your goals might change, which will have an effect on your planning. So your life is not going to be stagnant. Like you're not going to have a copy and paste of your life every single day for all 365 days. Things are going to happen. Things are going to change. You're going to get really busy. You're going to be really, you know, you're not going to have a lot going on. It's going to fluctuate. So it's okay when that happens and you have a blank page. Luckily so far this year, I have not had that happen, but I know in my bullet journals, like in 2021, I know, I think toward the end of 2021, let me see. So I have November of 2021 and there are lots of pages where I just did not do anything and I didn't even do December in this page or in this planner. And that's because I was in the process of closing on my house, moving states. Uh, I moved from Georgia to Alabama. I like there was a lot going on and I just did not have time to document in my Hobonichi. I've not had that happen yet. But I, I know that when things happen and life throws things to you that, you know, kind of takes you outside of your normal status quo life, you sometimes just can't do what you want to do in your planner and that's okay. So if it comes down that you do have blank pages because things happen, then you can back plan. You can try to kind of go back and think about what you did during the week and, you know, write down some things that you did. Or uh, maybe you just want to fill those pages, those blank pages with stickers. Or, you know, if you have a photo, like a little portable photo camera or printer, then maybe you print out pictures and put those in the blank pages or just leave them blank. It's okay to leave just blank pages and you can document on there if you want to you know, on vacation, didn't have time to document or, you know, maybe just make a note why you have a blank page. So that way, when you go back, you know, six months later, you can look at it and go, oh yeah, yeah, that's what happened. This is why this is blank. And then also understanding your lifestyle and your, your, how your goals change and your lifestyle changes. Uh, that could also help you just change journals. Like I said, I changed my weeks to a spiral notebook. It just my goals of what I wanted to use my planner for 
changed or change from a regular blank bullet journal to a undated bullet journal or to a dated bullet journal or whatever. You, you know, look at your lifestyle, look at your goals or use the planner that you need. And then my last main point, and there's really nothing else to kind of go into with this point, is that a planner is to help you organize your life. Use it as your life dictates not what your planner dictates. So the planner, this planner, for instance, has weeklies, dailies, monthlies, all of that. My planner does not di dictate that I have to do this. I do not have to fill out this page. I need to use this planner for what I need it for. I don't have to use the planner and write out the hours and document what I do during the day. I could use this as a to-do list. I could use this as 100% just to have pictures all over the place. Use your planner as you dictate, not what your planner dictates. If you have, for instance, a habit tracker, you've identified your habits that you want to track on a daily basis, and you have that written down in your planner, if you decide that you don't want to do that anymore, then don't. Your planner is not telling you what to do. You tell the planner what you need to use it for. I think all of those thoughts and kind of how I have used my planners throughout the years has really put me on a good path in 2023 with my current planner lineup. This has worked for me so far very well. I have not missed any days in my, my monthly, my weekly, my daily spreads in my cousin. I have not not used my weeklies as my like everyday carry. Every time I leave the house, this goes with me and it's worked really well for me. Or if it turns out later in the year, that's not going to work and I need to go to something else, then I'll do that. But I think what I've just talked about has really put me in a good place with my planner and I'm happy with what I'm doing. I don't see me needing to make any updates as the year goes on. However, you know, that might change. So, so do, if you have a planner and you're in the planning community, do what makes you happy. Find a planner that works for you. Don't feel like you need to mimic all the beautiful spreads that you see on YouTube or on Instagram. Those people are not you. Do what makes you happy. Use your planner to what you need it for and don't feel like you need to do what others do because you're just not going to be happy in the end. So, so with that, Thank you so much for watching. Um, please let me know down below kind of what your, your planner lineup is. If you've been successful in your planner lineup since the beginning of the year, or if you've had to change your planner, why? Um, I'd be really interested to find that out. So thank you so much for, for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>